welcome to Radio X and our brand new studios right here in Exeter. Hey, follow me and I'll show you around. Now we have three on-air studios at the radio station. This is the main one where all the programmes are broadcast from and where you can find me Monday to Friday with Drive Time. So I'll just sit here and talk you through what we're going to see. We're here for the Kitchen House Pride of Devon Awards. We're doing it a little bit differently this year for reasons you'll understand. Every year at Radio X, we ask people in Devon to nominate someone they think deserves an award. Pride of Devon is the awards event for people in all walks of life. Ben's over in Studio Two. That's right, Ash. Teachers, carers, parents, children, people who do something for the environment or the countryside and loads more too. We've got 15 awards in total and this year, because we're virtual, friends and family of the winners get to hear their stories. We were due to be at Exeter Castle to host Pride of Devon, but that's not possible because of the pandemic. But your home is your castle, so sit back, grab your drink to toast some special people we're going to tell you about and enjoy the show. We had hundreds of entries and we'll introduce you to the judges a little bit later. They include Nigel and Sam Dilley from Kutchin House, the headline sponsors of both the Pride of Devon 2020 Awards and also our Lifetime Achievement Award. Now we're saving that one until the very end. But we're grateful to Kutchin House for making this possible and also to all our category sponsors. We couldn't do any of this without them. And we couldn't do without you. It's the Radio X Pride of Devon Awards 2020 with Kitchen House. We're going to start with our first award, Neighbour of the Year, sponsored by Cavanna Homes. We're going to meet Helen and Shirley, who've been friends and neighbours for 18 years. Four years ago, life became really tough for both of them. Helen contracted breast cancer. Happily, she's now clear of that. And Shirley's husband, Alan, got bowel cancer. The outcome here, as we'll hear, wasn't good. And that's when you need friends and neighbours. We've always chatted over the fence, um, but since Shirley lost Alan, it's um, become a lot closer. She um, wasn't looking after herself ever so well. So I had to sort of like jeer up a little bit. It was about the week before he passed, um, before he got transferred from Wantford to Ex Exmouth. She said, oh, do you mind if I just go and say hello to Alan? And I explained that he wasn't very good. And the curtains were drawn. And as I come back, I opened the curtain and Helen was just whispering in his ear, I'll always look after him. And that sticks. Having read through the, uh, the nomination, and understanding what Helen's done with her, her neighbours and the support that she's given. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's really great. And being involved and being able to support the category, um, really knowing what you know, being a great neighbour's about, uh, which is something that we, we really understand, is, is really inspiring. So I think Helen's a very, very worthy winner. She's easy to love, really. She has her moments. <laughs> um, good laugh. We have lots of laugh, lots of laughter encourage her to go out for walks. Um, Alan's one of his favourite places in Budley and there's a nice bench there so we would go over because Shirley doesn't drive, she hasn't got a car so I'd uh, make her get in the car and go over to Budley, maybe watch some sunsets. It's my way of saying thank you. I mean we've done little things, we bought uh, uh, little bits for Christmas or something like that but that means nothing. This means everything. It's my way saying thank you for what she's done and what she carries on doing and she'll carry on doing it for the rest of her life I'm sure so she deserves to be nominated. We've been building homes in the West Country now for almost 100 years uh, and when you're you're building a new site and a new development it's not just about putting houses up it's actually about creating a community and making somewhere special for people to live and if you can then move into that area maybe with people around you that you don't know uh, and then start to form relationships and bonds with them. You know, Helen's story shows how important that can be. You can see the love. Congratulations, Helen Jocelyn, Neighbour of the Year. And thanks to Shirley for nominating her and Kavana Holmes, a true Devon home builder, for making that happen. Ben. 
Where would we be without the voluntary sector in this day and age? Now, this year's Volunteer of the Year Award is in association with King's Manor Care Home. And it's a bit of a love story as well, celebrating a hardworking, committed volunteer. Emma Baldwin loves Paul and he loves her and they both love Exmouth Gateway. It's a wonderful organisation for people with learning disabilities in the area. But the activities there don't just happen. Much goes on behind the scenes. And for that, you need people. People like Paul Baldwin. Exmouth Gateway is a social club for learning disabled adults. Um, it's been going about 30 years. We've got over 100 members um, from 18 up to 80. Um, and, and basically, we do what they want want to do within reason so um, they it's their ideas is what they feel comfortable doing but the main idea of what we do is to interact and socially with their peers um, and the outer world really a lot of people don't see what Paul does because it isn't just on a Monday night they don't see when he spends hours on the phone sorting out holidays or football or making sure the kits all ready and the equipment's all there and we're helping fill in all the grants and talking to people for funding and stuff so they don't see that bit of it so I want him to have some recognition for all that he does. I was just so overjoyed and so full of warmth that people still are out there in our community doing things like this that are so important for so many people and I think it's really special and really lovely we can acknowledge there. We've had so many volunteers and we're really grateful for volunteers it only seemed right that actually we give back to them. And I got Lyme's disease a few years back and I had quite a few issues from there and I think I'm out the other side so um, it was a lot of managing that whilst um, also I, I was determined not to let it um, beat me um, and I think that probably helped me with um, what I was doing at club because I had something to do rather than being defeating and just sitting down in a chair and a bit of oh woe is me, I actually got down to doing things which I probably think helped me in the end. Most people probably at club wouldn't even know that Paul wasn't well. I mean I obviously saw it because I'm living with him but they wouldn't have known and he just carried on as normal even though he's probably struggling a bit but yeah he carried on. I follow the Pride of Devon Awards anyway and I think it's such a lovely way to recognise people who otherwise wouldn't be recognised and I think it's a really lovely way for the guys living here at Kings Manor to get involved with the community and to, to be in touch as well. I don't do this for awards I do this because I love it and it is absolutely brilliant and nothing will ever stop me doing it so so it's funny I, I'm quite pr proud but humbled to get this war award. <laughs> And we're proud too. Well done, Paul. And our thanks to King Manor Care Home, a lovely place in Ottery St Mary, sponsoring the Volunteer of the Year Award. Now, Jamie has our next award. The Pride of Devon Community Contribution Award is always hotly contested and we had a huge number of people nominating this year's winner. She set up Exmouth Friends in Need, which is an online service to give support to people in the town who need a bit of help, which are not getting any in other ways. Claire Austin is a hero to so many, particularly since she started the Facebook page, which has become a formal voluntary organisation and she's even given up her job to run it. <laughs> Friends in Need started in November 18. Um, I just realised that there was a lot of people that were struggling locally and I just really wanted to help put a, a support channel out there for people that were struggling. But as soon as I set up the Facebook page, I had hundreds of people join and people were absolutely thrilled to be part of it. They thought it was a great idea to get a really community spirit going and we've got an amazing community spirit in Exmouth. So yeah, loads of people helped and now we have 6.3 thousand members on our Facebook page. I'm aware of Claire's project in Exmouth because I live in Exmouth um, and it's, it's fantastic that someone's taken that on and uh, helping out the, the vulnerable people, especially in the current climate. We've um, sponsored the Pride of Devon Awards for the last five years, um, so we're really interested in giving back things to the community, so you know, awarding people or recognising people for, for special contributions, and, and community contribution has been one that we've done um, more often than not because it ties in with, with our business and how we like to support and protect uh, the community. We will help anybody. If anybody comes to us and they need any help with things, we'll always help them. Um, it, it's not exclusively for people that are, are struggling financially because and mental health plays a massive part in why people are struggling these days. As a community to get together at any time is obviously important, um, obviously current times have, have proved that. Um, 
communities are, are the hub of, of any area, you know, so where people can be recommended and, and individuals can, can take on tasks and be a point of contact to, to help people who either aren't confident enough to do it themselves um, or are vulnerable and aren't able to get out and do those kind of things. Well, I was absolutely blown away that people had secretly um, put my name forward for this award. I'm super proud. Um, I'm proud of every volunteer that has helped. I'm proud of Exmouth for being so amazing and all helping one another. So I could, as I always say, I couldn't do it on my own. People in Exmouth are proud of Claire too. What she didn't say there is that thanks to her work and Exmouth Friends in Need, 20 families in the town are receiving food they otherwise would struggle to afford. And that's not all. A friendship group in Exmouth brings people together, including those in their 20s whose loneliness is often overlooked. Claire Austin is our Pride of Devon Community Contribution Award winner, with thanks to Tamar Security, who have been huge supporters of these awards since we launched them back in 2013. We're going to honour a services veteran now. It's our Military Contribution Award with Solv IT, who have been supporting us in this category since we started the Pride of Devon Awards seven years ago. This is a two-part story, really. The winner and the Devon charity they work for, the veterans charity based in Barnstable. We're going to meet Dave Viner. Now, Dave was in the Royal Logistic Corps, served in Kosovo for a while, based at Chivener for a bit. You get around when you're in the army. But when he left the military, and this is all too common, life was really difficult. Dave's been ill as well, and he's had a pretty severe operation. But now back in Civvy Street, he threw himself into volunteering and now works for the Veterans Charity. We'll tell you about both. The passion he brings, the effort he puts in, is quite remarkable. And having a veteran wanting to give something back and wanting to help other veterans especially as you know dave himself has experienced various difficulties since leaving the, the forces and he's, he's got various uh, health issues and, and injuries uh, it's quite humbling to be able to work with someone like that but he really thoroughly deserved his efforts not just as a serviceman but actually now as someone giving something back i felt he really deserved the recognition when i left the army <laughs> it's quite hard to talk about we went we were really struggling financially um, so we had to go to uh, the British Legion to get some food vouchers and then we had to go shopping. You know, our cupboards were empty, the, everything, it was just a horrendous time in our life. Um, and then we met up with Danny um, a few years ago now and realised what they do um, and what a difference it makes to someone. You know, we deliver food shopping to their house. They haven't got to leave the house. They haven't, you know, if you've got anxiety and stuff, you don't want to be going shopping. Um, so we get that food delivered to them. Solve IT are proud sponsors of the Military Contribution Award and we'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Dave on winning the award. I sponsored this particular category because of my background in the military, a former Royal Marine. Uh, I left as an injured guy, um, and therefore this particular category means, means a lot to me personally. It obviously uh, hits home when, when you're injured yourself, um, you get support from, from places like the Veterans Charity, and then, then what, what better to try and give, give something back. One of the reasons that we really must support our veterans is the impact they've made to our society and to our way of life. A lot of people look at the armed forces as, as you know, they go to war, that sort of thing. It's the typical thought of a, a veteran, but actually the impact they have on our society, on our infrastructure, the medical uh, profession, the difference that they make you know, when we have floods and things like that, it's, it's immense. And they really put their lives on the line. Their careers are often very short. And sometimes when things get difficult for them, it's only right that we're there for them as they were there for us. You know, to be chosen as a, as a winner, to be seen as making a difference to other people's lives, you yeah. know, awesome. Before we move on, let's take a moment to introduce you to the Pride of Devon judges. These are the people who spend time reading through the nominations we receive at Radio X. Then you think, lock horns to the side who received the trophy. Well, the good news is that they tend to reach agreement pretty quickly. Let's meet them, starting with Simon Jupp. There's been some exceptional people doing exceptional things across our area and it's great to recognise what they've done. These people often don't realise they've been nominated, and so to even realise they've been nominated, let alone win, is a great way of saying them thank you for everything you've done. We've just had some amazing nominations. I mean, it's been a very difficult choice. Um, 
the the the, the level and the standard, and um, and you feel very humbled because people do such amazing things in adverse circumstances. It reminds you of all of the good people that we live amongst, not necessarily the and stop seeing all the bad people, because all you hear of in the press and the news is the bad people that do bad things to us, steal our things, do this, do that. You don't really hear of all the good things that most of the people are doing and just leading normal lives. But it's great, I think. I think it's, it's great to hear from and read about all of the people that help us. You know, I think it's important to recognise uh, people that contribute, um, you know, unsung heroes. Um, I'm, I'm very much behind that type of thing. Um, and you know, I jumped at the chance to, to support it and be involved. Oh my God, it was quite tearful actually reading through them. It, it was hard to find who to pick, but a, a, a couple of them were like close to my heart. Okay, I really think it should be celebrated for all the fantastic work that they do. We had uh, a lot of things to read about many of the worthy candidates and it's quite um, spooky how many of us came to the same conclusions on many of the people and there was the main difficulty of the problem was actually picking because they are all meritous. We've got so many fantastic people doing brilliant things across Exeter and East Devon and it was absolute privilege to be a judge of the Pride of Devon Pride of Awards. We've got to make sure that we celebrate the great things that people do in our communities and this is a great way of doing it. Um, what I was quite surprised about was how we all came to a similar conclusion fairly quickly. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than that, but it's interesting how we sort of, how we seem to read it the same way today, but um, still very difficult choices all the time. There's so many people out there, day to day, helping with uh, charities, helping with sports, helping people, carers, and we've seen that through the COVID crisis, how our communities here in Devon have all pulled together and it's just a joy to be part of it. We've a new category for the Pride of Devon Awards this year. We're a county famed for fabulous food and drink, great farmland for our meat and our fruit and our vegetables. Two coastlines. I mean, who else can say that when it comes to the fruit of the sea? And the markets, the pubs, the restaurants, the takeaways. There really is nowhere better. So when we launched the Pride of Devon Awards 2020 in association with Cofton Holidays in South Devon, we asked for nominations for a Devon food hero, however they contributed to food and drink in the county. Jordan Wiltshire wrote to us about Ellie Wentworth. You may have seen Ellie on the telly. She was a MasterChef The Professionals finalist a little while back. For the past couple of years, Ellie's been the head chef at The Angel in Dartmouth and in that time accolades have poured her way. A.A. Rosettes, Michelin Plates and best of all, she's the Pride of Devon food hero, not least because the work she does in bringing on the next generation of cooking talent. It's really important to get these younger chefs, ladies and men to get into the industry and build a career. Now for me, it doesn't matter where they are, it doesn't matter you know, what level they're at. It's about the attitude to come to work, you know, willing to come to work, clean, tidy, and the chef or the head chef can teach them. You know, it's all about them just eager to learn. Oh, it's super important to recognise uh, the food heroes in Devon, um, just showing what they're able to do with uh, the, the local fare and um, being able to take it to the next level with the development of the, the younger chefs is super important so that they come up through uh, their personal growth. You know, that's my job now, to get them to the scratch to what there is and I just think it's important to try and get as many females and males into the chef hospitality. She's gone to colleges, cooked with young chefs at local colleges and all about bringing them up. She's had a few work experience kids in here as well from colleges and even helped at um, on the food festivals than the cook along with schools. To be honest, I didn't have a clue Jordan nominated me and for me it's really like a, a humble thing to be awarded this and I really am proud that the team and Jordan did this without me knowing and I feel like now I'm, you know, I've done what I should be doing and I'm teaching them what I, like what is right and I don't know, I'm quite humble and I'm really happy and I appreciate everyone for doing that.
Thanks to Cofton Holidays for getting behind the Devon Food Hero Award and to Ellie and the team at the Angel in Dartmouth for letting us have a look around in one of the periods where people were actually allowed to eat out in 2020. It's been such a difficult year for hospitality, which is so important to Devon. And if you're in that sector, in whatever role you play, we wish you the very best for 2021. Our Child of Achievement Award is always popular with parents, teachers, uncles, grands, all making nominations this year in association with Kitty Carew Nurseries. We're celebrating a little girl from Exmouth this year. The wonderful Devon charity Dream Away wrote to us about Shannon Potter. Shannon's mum and dad have some physical disabilities, which makes getting around not the easiest thing in the world. So Shannon steps in to help. She'll just do anything. If, if I've forgotten something upstairs, she'll go and get it. The same as her dad, her dad struggles as well. Um, she's always um, cooking meals. Any, any, any way she can, she, she's always there to help. We try and put money pots up wherever we can, um, collection pots, and Shannon, a lot of the time, have to carry them, because I can't. She helps me count it, bag it, take it to the bank. Um, so she does that as well, but yeah, she's done her haircut um, and she's just done so much for Dream Away. I was happy to have my hair cut um, because my hair was um, really hard to brush and wash and dry. Um, so I was really happy um, and I like helping people. When I first read about what Shannon has done for, you know, not only her family but for the charity as well that she, or a couple of charities actually that she works for, um, I felt really emotional to begin with. Um, just brought a tear to my eye really, just because, you know, reading it you could see, um, you know, she's a very special little girl with such a big heart. For a child of nine years old, you know, to take all that on board but also not just thinking about her family but everyone else's families as well with, you know, all the charity work and things that she's done. I do cooking, I do, um, I help my mum do pots, um, I count them, bag them, help my mum um, put in the bank and um, I get stuff for her and my dad um, because my dad just can't if he's upstairs and I'm downstairs, I get something for him. Kitty Crew is a company where we look after lots of different children. Um, so children are very close to our hearts, you know, we're very passionate about that. So yeah, it was lovely to read what Shannon's done. Dream Away is a Devon charity that makes dreams come true for countless children and adults across the Southwest. So please check them out and help them if you can. And thanks to Kitty Carew for sponsoring our Child of Achievement Award and for Shannon for winning it. Yep, a remarkable girl. Let's move on. Every child needs a teacher. I know I used to be one, a child, not a teacher. This year's Pride of Devon Teacher of the Year is from Plymtree Primary School. Just to let you know on this one, because of school regulations, we had to use a microphone attached to our camera, which means the sound quality is a little bit iffy compared to the rest of our categories. But we do hope that that won't spoil your enjoyment as we meet Caitlin Pilcher. It's fun, it's, it's exciting, um, but definitely it provides sort of different challenges every day. You walk into work not really knowing what you're going to get each day. Difficult, but it's what I live for. Making learning fun is probably one of the things I enjoy most about my job. Um, if I'm not interested in what I'm teaching and if I wouldn't be interested in my lesson, then probably it's not going to be interesting for the children either. Um, it, it's finding ways to motivate them by doing something a bit different. Um, just today, we've, instead of just talking about pictures, we've been for a walk around the school and we've talked about complaints from objects that we, we can see. And, they've spoken to me in my ear and the children really believe everything that we've spoken to them about and it's, it's all about making them believe the stories that you're telling them and kind of building the idea that it's completely real and they, they enjoy it that way more. I'm really proud to receive this award, um, it was a complete shock um, and uh, I can't thank people enough I guess. We, we as a team at the school, as such a small school with only three classes, we really work together and during lockdown and before lockdown, we've, we've 
pull together even more. The Pride of Devon Bravery Award, sponsored by Amicus Law in Southern Hay, Exeter, goes to someone who saved two lives in two separate incidents this year. Taxi drivers see it all. Sometimes they're like other emergency services. That's certainly how it feels when you hear Christian Dumtrescu's story. Sebe Petra wrote to us about Christian, but we heard about him already here at Radio X because when a building on New North Road caught fire, we covered it in one of our news bulletins. feeling I think is from my soul if I see something happen every time I stop my car and I help or if I can do I can do for everybody uh, I was at work with customer in my car I do one job and I pass the building and I see the, the smoke I open the door and I run because he was upstairs yeah and was inside smoke and I, I only he's screaming inside the top floor when I opened the door on the flat there was the fire smoke yeah and I can't see him inside but I hear where he is and I go inside and I take him and he was with uh, disability and I take him in my back and I ran outside my reaction initially really was amazement that, that in such a short space of time one person could find themselves in, in a position twice. Obviously the first one he knew the, the chap that he took from the, the burning house which is extremely brave to run into a building and get somebody out and on the second occasion he didn't even know the person and still in the early hours of the morning took that risk. Who knows what could have happened, somebody very distressed could have, could have flailed out, could have jumped and pulled him over as well. I keep him in my arm and I take him and I, with force, you know, and I go from, from the bridge there because I want to keep him there until the pole is coming. He's an amazing person. What I think he does is he typifies uh, why it's a great city to live in. He's a, a, a local taxi driver, but he really feels as if he's part of the community, wants to support the community, and has shown that there's nothing more to do for the community. I feel happy because I feel like I do something for, for community, for people, and people remember me and I feel very happy for that. Well done, Christian. What he didn't say there in that film was that he also went to the rescue of a man on a bridge in Exeter and helped prevent a tragedy there as well. So thanks to Christian and our friends at Amicus Law for sponsoring our Bravery Award and for their continued support here at Radio X. It's much appreciated. Our Pride of Devon Countryside Champion now, which is sponsored by Bicton College, the Career College in East Devon. And here's something you may not have heard of unless you're a keen horticulturalist. Himalayan balsam. Doesn't that sound lovely? Extravagant. Lie back in your bath and soak in some Himalayan balsam. Don't do that. You might itch for decades because this is a plant that's out of control, a weed with attitude, if you will. And the man we're honouring as a countryside champion is out to get it. Here's Patrick Hamilton. Himalayan balsam is an invasive species. It's a, a weed that came in, a weed that came in in the 1830s and it destroys the local ecosystem and it's been declared an invasive species so the project is to work with volunteers which is great um, the volunteers are hugely grateful for over the last 10 years they they have done a wonderful job with our balsam project uh, in Ill attempting to eliminate this from our catchment. I think it's fantastic and I think that it's one of those things that otherwise could just be left and um, which would be disastrous for the environment around here. It's absolutely beautiful and the work of the organisation is amazing and something that we would really like to continue to support with. I'm absolutely delighted to, 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 to get this award. If nothing else, it's a, a huge um, fillip for everyone who's out there, all these volunteers who are out there pulling Himalayan balsam, to know that someone thinks it's worth doing. For us here at Bicton, it's extremely important that our students have access to amazing facilities, of course, but the best thing they have here is the actual estate. Um, so our students learn how to undertake countryside management, agriculture, um, horticulture, and all of those skills are really important, probably more so than ever now in terms of climate change and looking after the environment. So really, really valuable. The Pride of Devon Awards, in particular this award, is really in keeping with what we do and our values around sustainability and looking after the 
the environment, it's just even more special that it's local. As a leading light in the Otter Valley Association, Patrick's been on a mission to eradicate the area of Himalayan balsam. He's mobilised volunteers to claim back swathes of the Otterton and Budley areas for local plants. People from 12 to 85 have been out to hunt down and kill. If you're Himalayan balsam, be afraid, be very afraid. And thanks to Bicton College for sponsoring the Pride of Devon Countryside Champion. It's the Pride of Devon Awards 2020 and now it's time to meet our young employee of the year in association with RGB Building Supplies, which is a fantastic Devon business that does so much to support the community. Now, Sydney Lovell started her apprenticeship at a local accountancy firm at a bit of a disadvantage because she'd been ill and wasn't feeling that positive and she also had a false start to her course. But as you'll see in a moment, Sydney's a determined young person. When her firm suffered a tragedy, she stepped in dug in and proved herself just to be the kind of person you want around when the going gets tough. So first, let's meet her tutor, Julie Rule from Exeter College. When Sydney first started with me, um, she'd had some, she'd had to delay her teaching because she'd been ill and um, therefore she came to me sort of having done part of the level three course already and she was quite sort of like, because she'd had all these things she'd had to go through, she um, was quite lacking in confidence at the time, but she was very determined, she really wanted to succeed. It feels really rewarding because I never thought I'd ever get anywhere from leaving school, so to be able to receive an award for my hard work really does, hard work does pay off. If she ever un doesn't understand something, she would always ask, well, a lot of students will sort of like hide that and then will not succeed because they haven't actually been brave enough in a way to ask questions. And she's so driven that she would literally not worry about how her questions were perceived. She would ask them anyway, and that's how she did so well. I was very fortunate that I managed to pass all my exams first time and then left A plus with my level 3 qualification. So I currently work in an accountancy practice in Plymouth and I fit right in there and able to crack on with a lot of the stuff that they give me and a lot of the stuff that's available to do in an accountancy practice. It hasn't always been easy, you know, but she has really shown such um, strength of mind and character that she's, and positivity that she's saying, no, you know, okay, I didn't understand that. I will keep asking, I'll keep working at it until I actually understand it and then and and she so so she succeeded. Congratulations to Sydney and our young employee of the year and to RGB Building Supplies. You're watching the Pride of Devon Awards 2020 from Radio X in association with Kitchen House. And we're moving on to our Carer of the Year now with Burton Home Care. And thanks to Nigel Burton and his team and all the carers who've done so much for so many people in the most difficult of years. Beverly Hopkins wrote to us about somebody special to her and also to her brother Kevin. Kevin has advanced vascular dementia, which can be a really distressing illness. And it means people suffering from it really do need care. And that's where Francis Peep comes in, because Kevin couldn't have stayed at home living independently for as long as he did. Here's Francis. So I would go in and see him two or three times a day, help him with his food. And, um, but then it, it got... His dementia worsened and he would end up wandering about and getting lost and um, he'd be out at night wandering and so I would sometimes at night go and pick him up in the car at sort of midnight or something like that. And I looked through the nomination and uh, I was blown away to be honest with you. I read through um, what Frances had done and how she'd looked after Kevin, how she'd gone over and above. The call of duty really. Um, she had not only looked after Kevin but a young family um, what she'd done for other charities and that she'd held down a job in, in, in a doctor's surgery, I believe, as well. And um, an absolute guardian angel. So I'd see him first thing in the morning, 
help him prepare his breakfast because we realised that he was finding it difficult to prepare his meals. So I'd help him with that. Then we'd help him prepare his lunch and then I'd also go in in the evening and help him with... And then I'd, I'd, I'd try and do jobs in his house. Within my business, um, these are the type of people that I employ. These are the people that I send out um, to look after very vulnerable people in the community. And uh, these, in the community, these are outstanding people. These are one-off people. It's really lovely of Kevin's sisters to, to put me forward for the award. Really, really, yeah, very special of them. There's so many people out there that go above and beyond. And I think that they need the opportunity to feel special for themselves. They go in and out every day, selfishly, to make a difference to other people's lives without asking for anything back. Well spoken, Nigel. Nigel Burton from Burton Home Care, sponsors of the Carer of the Year. And our winner this year, Francis Peak. Beverly, who nominated Francis, says she's a guardian angel. And we'd echo that. We're on now to the Environmental Award with Coastal Recycling. Coastal have supported the Pride of Devon just about since we started and they have a community fund that's worth checking out too if you have a project that could do with a little bit of support. We're going to have to tell you this story a little differently because our winner was a bit camera shy. Lots of the time people don't even know they've been nominated for an award so it is understandable that they may not want to appear on film. Kayleigh Allen told the Pride of Devon judges about Rhea McMahon and described her passion to do anything she could for the environment. At work, she encouraged everyone to up their game, sometimes by making small changes and sometimes bigger ones. She made presentations to her colleagues packed with energy-saving ideas and to the firm's top dogs too about what they could be doing. Outside of work, she organises beach cleans, cooking competitions that have an eco twist, creating doable lists that friends and family can adopt so they can make a difference. Although we can't hear from Rhea herself, the team at Coastal Recycling are impressed, as well as the Pride of Devon judges. From Coastal Recycling, here's Richard Marsh. We're involved with the Pride of Devon um, Awards because they celebrate, uh, in our particular category, excellence uh, in environmental issues. This is an environmental award, and as a leading provider of environmental services, we want to celebrate success and celebrate other people's commitment. Uh, to environmental issues. There's no better way than ask, uh, if you're going to ask people to do something is actually to show them how to do it. And if you give them a list and you set targets, that's the way to encourage people to do it. Asking them to recycle is too broad a uh, question, too much of a uh, broad statement. If you give them real demonstrations, and I think that's what Rhea's really done, um, is brought it home, made it easy to understand how these organisations, how actual people within the office uh, can recycle. That's why we think she's an environmental champion. Statistics show that when we go to work, we tend to forget some of those great disciplines uh, that we use at home. It's quite often our children who drive us to uh, recycle well at home. And when we go to work, it can fall by the wayside. So the workplace is massively important. And it's often quite difficult to persuade uh, colleagues to participate. And, and, and what Rhea, I think, has demonstrated through her efforts is um, bringing other people on board and getting their commitment to recycling. Thanks for joining us at Radio X as we celebrate the Pride of Devon Winners 2020. And if you're one of those winners, or perhaps someone who's made a successful nomination, we hope you'll enjoy the show, perhaps with a small drink. The Pride of Devon Community Sport Award is a double header this year. If the award were a sport, it would be synchronised swimming. Two people moving together in such perfect harmony, you'd think they were married. It's kind of just a, you know, a fully inclusive um, group, really. And it's we like to sort of say it's, it's more about like you know it's more about friendships with a little bit of fitness mm. thrown in. Um, yeah, I'd be lying if I if I didn't say that most of our runs end up somewhere in a cafe or a pub somewhere. You know, <laughs> and we probably offset the calories um, <laughs> quite easily with, um, with with having a pint or whatever. But actually, you know, it's all about having fun and enjoying it. And actually, what that leads to is people going, actually, I can do this, mm. uh, rather than it being that sort of daunting thing of like it's it's just for fit people. And and that's what we're always trying to dispel is actually and anyone can do it. it doesn't matter kind of who you are, what 
what size you are, what background you've got, um, you know, obviously injury permitting and that, but it, it's, you know, it's, it, it can be achievable and, um, you know, we just welcome everyone really and it's yeah, just... Yeah, it's not all about the running as well, we have other stuff that goes on, we have ladies and gents that meet to go open water swimming every week, you know, we have walks that go on and finish with tea and cake, we have cycle rides that are either kind of like the lads go off and do mam head or we have like a social ride that goes out to Topsham. Obviously you don't set out for doing it for anything like this but to actually get recognised for it and as I say you know just just receiving those letters and that kind of that recognition of it is amazing and um, yeah it's, it means an awful lot. Shelley and Neil Stammers, organisers of Tryhards and our community sports winners, sponsored by XDAB, new digital radio hopefully coming to Exeter with Radio X behind it. Before we present our headline category, the Pride of Devon Lifetime Achiever, we always have a special recognition award. It's for somebody who may not have met the criteria for the other categories, but the judges thought they were a top-notch person who deserved to be celebrated. This year, thanks to Exeter Live Better, which is making Exeter an even more wonderful place to live, and to Martin McPherson, who nominated him, we're honouring Jack Littlejohns from Mid Devon. Jack loves football, he loves people, and he's combined those loves to help Barnstable Ability Football Club thrive. So the club really, what they do for me personally is they helped me with uh, confidence, self-esteem. Uh, they proved that it's such a huge routine as part of my life now. The club is over the years it, they've helped me become such a better person and, and I feel like now that I wanted to start this project or vision that I want to help out other people around the area so that they've got the same as me. I'm speechless. I mean, I'm so proud of him. I really am. He's done For what he's done to show for other people and things like that is absolutely amazing, especially what he's been through and what he's going through and everything, to show other people that they can build that confidence, they can do it, no matter what disability, physical disability or anything, they can still achieve what they want to achieve if they want to do it. Obviously, Barnsville Ability Football Club is aimed for players that have a disability in the local area. Um, so it caters for people that have got a learning disability like myself, uh, autism, cerebral palsy, uh, deaf impairments, to receive something like this, um, it is, I just couldn't put it in any context. It is absolutely unbelievable for me. And on behalf of, of all the staff, we are so delighted uh, that Jack has got this, this, this award. He just does wonderful uh, work in the community. Uh, well-being is so important at the moment, especially in these slightly darker times. And it's people like Jack um, that we're just incredibly proud of. So congratulations, Jack, from everyone at Exeter City Council. But he's not just an unbelievable man. He's a real achiever and the people at Barnstable Ability Football Club think he's a star. So congratulations to Jack Littlejohns. Jack's the second person tonight involved in ability football. Paul Baldwin from Exmouth Gateway coaches three ability teams. In Exeter, the City Community Trust have similar teams. Whatever your level of ability, as we've seen tonight, if you've got the enthusiasm, there's a place for you in Devon. Our final award is the Lifetime Achievement Award, sponsored by the Pride of Devon's headline sponsor, Kitchen House. We're really grateful that Nigel and Sam Dilly from Kitchen House got behind the Pride of Devon Awards. They were judges as well. And before we meet our winner, let's hear from them. It reminds you of all of the good people that we live amongst, not necessarily the and stop seeing all the bad people, because all you hear of in the press and the news is the bad people that do bad things to us, steal our things, do this, do that. You don't really hear of all the good things that most of the people are doing and just leading normal lives. But it's great, I think. I think it's, it's great to hear from and read about all of the people that help us. Quite tearful, actually, reading through them. It, it was hard to find who to pick, but a, a, a couple of them were like close to my heart. I really think it should be celebrated for all the fantastic work that they do. Kitchen House are at Marsh Barton, Exeter. So do pop in and say hello to them. The Lifetime Achiever this year is going to be introduced by Radio X's youngest presenter. And it comes to something when that's no longer me. The baton has passed. Here's Jamie Taylor. He was the future once. 
The Lifetime Achievement Award is the Pride of Devon's most prestigious award. And over the years, we've met people who have done so much for the county, constantly, consistently and credibly. Our award winner would deserve an award any year. And in fact, he's a former Community Contribution Award winner. Daniel Rowe Lavery launched and runs Devon Freewheelers, otherwise known as the Blood Bikes. It's a vital emergency service run by volunteers. And as we'll see, this year, coronavirus has increased demand for freewheeling Dan and his team. So since the pandemic started, um, from March... Uh, our services have literally gone through the roof, uh, whereby we accepted pretty much any request. So prior to COVID, it was pretty much blood biking and blood uh, and you know donor products. But when COVID kicked in, there was a huge demand then for the elderly who were isolating, who maybe needed their medications picked up. Uh, you know, just looking after the community in a whole host of ways swab testing. Uh, so we've been doing an awful lot of swab testing for the RD&E um, since the outbreak uh, began. Um, we've been providing those services seven days a week um, and an awful lot of those services as well are again supported by the volunteer network. So yeah the blood bikes operate uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, throughout the whole year um, and it's manned uh, entirely by volunteers. Volunteers that provide their time uh, to uh, serve their community, transporting blood samples, uh, blood to the air ambulance so that they can uh, facilitate transfusion at the scene of a critical incident. Uh, we transport the donor breast milk to the neonatal units uh, for the premature babies. Uh, we provide non-injury fall services to the elderly at home, a whole host of services um, that have developed from the earlier days of just blood biking. Well, I'm hugely honoured, hugely honoured. Uh, I wasn't aware that uh, this had happened uh, until very recently, uh, and I'm extremely humbled you know, that somebody should nominate us and have a look at what we're doing, uh, because that's hugely important to us. Um, and it is very much that, you know, Devon Freewheelers is, is not my charity. Devon Freewheelers is the volunteers. It's all about the volunteers. Uh, and this is a true testament to their work as well. So a massive thank you to everybody who's thought of us, nominated us, voted for us. Uh, and it's a huge honour to receive the award. The Pride of Devon Lifetime Achiever Award 2020 with our friends at Kutchin House goes to Daniel Rowe Lavery. Congratulations to him and all at Devon Freewheelers, a worthy winner. Ashley. And that's it, the Radio X Pride of Devon Awards 2020, done and dusted for another year. For all of you with shiny trophies, thank you for what you've done in your communities. To all of you who've made a nomination, whether or not your candidate came out tops, thank you and please do try again next year. To all our sponsors, we really couldn't have done it without you. We know it's been a difficult year and we really appreciate you sticking with us and making it happen, especially to Kitchen House, who've been our headline sponsor this year. I'm Ashley Jury, and thanks to my colleagues Ben Clark, Jamie Taylor and Sally Moss, who've worked on the whole project, and to Sam Sterrett for producing this video. I'll be back on Drive Time on Radio X tomorrow. Ben's here for breakfast, and you can re-watch this programme on the Radio X website, which is always packed with Devon News and our YouTube channel too. For now, thanks for watching and goodbye. Thank you.